Okay. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Open Access Week. Today we're going to continue our week of sessions on open access issues and opportunities. And uh, there you can see our schedule for the week. If you were unable to attend any of the sessions that took place earlier this week, you can still view them or listen to them as they were recorded and archived in AU Space, which we're actually going to be learning more about today. The link to the recordings and the PowerPoint presentations can be found at the Open Access website under Archived Webcasts. And I'll put that link into the text box. There you go. Oh, sorry. I sent that link to Tony, who is the last person to need that link. Sorry, I will send it to this room. There we go. Now, during the presentation, there will be opportunities for questions and comments, and we invite you at that time to use the microphone in Illuminate by clicking on the microphone icon in the bottom left corner of your screen. Please remember to click on it again when you're done speaking so that you will free it up for somebody else. If you don't have audio capabilities, you can also text questions and comments in the text box, and we'll try to stay on top of these. Now today, our presenters will be using the application sharing feature in Illuminate to display their PowerPoint presentation and to take us to some websites that they're going to be discussing. The application window will open over the whiteboard so that you can still use your microphone and text box on the left side of your screen. And you can adjust the size of the application sharing window by dragging the edges or corners. If you have any questions while the application is on or any problems, please text me and I'll try to help you with those. Finally, at the end of the session, some lucky participants' names will be drawn for an open access t-shirt. So stick around at the end for that, please. Now I'd like to introduce our three presenters today. We have Steve Schaefer, Tony Tin, and Colin Elliott. Steve is the Director of Library Services at Athabasca University. He's a graduate of AU, has a BSc, and he earned his Master of Library and Information Studies at the University of Alberta sorry, in 1991. His professional interests lie in the provision of resources and services in the distance and online learning environment, the information seeking behaviors of distance and online students, the use of mobile devices in teaching and learning, and digitization and preservation of materials. Steve is a member of the Canadian Library Association and American Library Association, and he's actively involved in a number of provincial, national, and international activities in the area of library collections, library services, digitization, and the use of technology as an, as an enabler. Tony Tin is the head of digital initiatives and electronic resources at Athabasca University Library, where he oversees the library's digital preservation and the repository development, electronic publishing, mobile library, the metadata harvesting service, and other digitization initiatives. Tony has initiated a number of mobile learning projects to promote and make the library's digital collections and learning content more widely accessible and to support distance learners who are using mobile phones to access library resources. His mobile ESL project has received an honorable mention for excellence and innovation in use of learning technology from the Canadian Network for Innovation in Education. In 2002, he was honored as a recipient of the AU Sue and Derek Rowlandson Memorial Award for Service Excellence. He's published articles and book chapters and presented at conferences on topics such as library technology, digital libraries, and mobile learning. And lastly, Colin Elliott is the digitization specialist for Athabasca University. Colin coordinates the digitization efforts of the AU library as well as the AU space repository, mobile projects, other digital projects, and library-related websites. Some of the projects that Colin has been most involved with are the digitization portal. All of the AU's digitized collections, mobile ESL project, sorry, and, this, and the mobile ESL project, which is a mobile website teaching basic English grammar. He's also been involved with the Workplace English, which is a mobile website featuring video animations and audio clips to teach English for workplace situations and English pronunciation. And finally, AU Space, which we'll see today, the 
Athabasca University version of DSpace, which is used to preserve and disseminate AU scholarly materials. Colin has published book chapters on M libraries as well as presented at conferences, both domestically and internationally. And now that I've said the word digitization, I think, six times, I'm going to take a break and uh, hand over the microphone to our three presenters today. Uh, Tony, can you use the mic? Yes. So let the show begin. First of all, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Tony Tin, not Tiny Tim. Uh, recently, like you know, I have a tutor like you know, called the library and asked if they could talk to the Tim in the library. So my name, my last name is Tim and not Tim. I only engage in legal business anyway. So uh, I'm really pleased to be here, like you know, and talk about how we can use uh, our open access archive and repository, the AU space, to promote and enhance uh, open access within our institution. Now to start with. Let's look at like you know some of the major crises we are facing today in the in the information age. So, what is the major crisis? Well, believe it or not, we are facing a digital preservation crisis. Large amount of digital information are at risk or already lost. So, I would like to share a, a interesting quotation with you. So you know like you know what the crises are and what are our challenge. Well, as all of you know now, we live in the information age. Information is produced in greater quantities and with greater frequency than any time in history. So our challenge is how we can preserve this information and how we can make it available to our generation. Now, especially in the area of library and how we can classify or index the information and to make this information easily accessible like you know to our learners. Now the quickest challenge is what is a wave today, it could be gone tomorrow. So this is the major crisis. It's the digital pressure, it's the digital preservation crisis. Well given the urgency of the crisis, many institutions has created and established open access repository to address the issue. Now many of you will probably ask Tony, what is a what is an institutional repository? Now let me give you a really nice definition of institutional repository. So what is a repository? Clifford Lynch has defined repository as a set of service that a university offers to the member of its community for the management and dissemination of digital material created by the institution and its community members. Well, generally speaking, uh, institutional repository is a storehouse of digital information in support of scholarly communication. Now, before I move on, like you might to my next slide, let's do a short exercise. Now, how many of you have an open access repository and archive? At your institution. Now, if you have a repository, all you need to do is to go and click the check icon. If you don't, go and check the X icon. And our facilitator Lynn will do all the counting and report the result. So go ahead. Tony, I just grabbed the mic because I think there's a little bit of confusion. Some people uh, please use the green check mark to indicate yes and the red X to indicate no. Rebecca, I'm not sure if you had a comment or if it was a, a mistake in choosing the hands up icon. <laughs> so I'll leave the mic and Rebecca. 